Oh hey guys, Ryan from Social Scope Podcast. Sorry, I'm trying out some new stuff with vlogging and I'm not really used to this at all. I'm used to being a filmmaker who sets up all my shots properly, not on a little gorilla pod. Anyway, so why have we got you here today? Today, we're going to show you our journey on how we built our new podcast studio. As you may be aware, we were shooting our podcast out in our main living room which was really nice, it looked like it actually looked quite decent for something that we just kind of rigged up. The only problem was, by having it in the living room, it was literally constantly set up with cameras and microphones and I couldn't actually live in my living room. So, how did I build my new podcast studio? I kicked my roommate the fuck out. Which was a dick move, he's a lovely guy, but I wanted a spare room and so I've taken a new spare room and I've zhuzhed it up to be the new Social Scope podcast studio. So, what are you going to need to make a decent podcast studio? We already had some of the gear, but I'll list it through and I'll include that in the sort of cost list. So, one of the things we had to begin with, obviously, is some decent microphones. So, we purchased two sets of the Rode Pod mics, which are, honestly, they're like $150 to $200 Australian, which is absolutely nothing. They're a really high quality condenser microphone, and then we bought two articulating arms, and they're about $40 to $50 Australian which is still pretty decent, and you can actually just kind of clamp them onto anything, which is fucking sweet. Okay guys, so you're gonna need something you can actually plug the microphones into and record. I recommend an audio interface. This is a USB device with XLR inputs that you can plug straight into your computer or laptop. The reason this is helpful, because then you can record in a program like Adobe Audition, or GarageBand, or even something free like Audacity. In saying that, I also use a Zoom H4n field recorder. This is a portable recording device with two XLR inputs that records straight to the unit. All right guys, so the next step, video. You don't need a fancy video camera to do all this stuff. Even though I did just splash like nearly like five grand on the new Canon R6, which I'm filming on now, and it looks sick, but you don't need it. In all honesty, you could just film it with your phone. Like, you don't need anything amazing. But what you can do is if you shoot it in 4K, that will help you out a lot. If you have an editing timeline that's set to 1080, but you put 4K footage on it, that means you can crop in and out, in and out, and not lose any quality. The reason that's helpful, it looks like you have three different camera angles when you only had one camera rolling, and that's extremely helpful and productive, and it means you don't have to set up multiple stuff or spend heaps of money on extra cameras. All right, so what did I do to actually build up the space? I went down to the local furniture shop and bought a big glass desk. That way I had something to mount the microphones to and somewhere for my guests to sit down. So after that, I took a little trip down to the paint store. I went and bought a two litre can of black interior matte paint. I actually needed another two litres because I stuffed up my calculations. Anyway, <laughs> I also bought the accessories. I bought a roller, a roller tray, a decent sleeve, some drop sheets, just to make sure that I kept things neat. All right guys, so fun fact time about your boy Ryan. <laughs> I worked in a paint store for four years. Like, actually maybe even five. That's what I did through like my teenage years. I don't know what the f I am doing. Like I am like, I'm doing some basic shit. I got a decent roller, I've taped things up. But the job I have done on this is a fucking monstrosity. <laughs> All right, so I'm fucking over this already. <laughs> I feel like this thing's gonna take like at least three coats to look like semi-decent and I don't think I bought enough paint. Trust me guys, like get a friend to help you paint paint. Painting shit. Painting is such a bad sport. So after we were done painting, we went down to the local rubber. I shouldn't say rubber store. Rubber store is going to sound bad. Foam store. We'll say foam store. Anyway, so we got some soundproofing panels to put up on the wall. And I know what you're thinking. How much of a difference does that make to the audio? And to be honest, I, I, I don't f know. <laughs> I just got them because they looked cool. I wanted some texture in the background. F sue me. That's the filmmaker and like photographer of me. You can splash light on and it makes cool shapes. What you doing, guy? I don't know. <laughs> Help. Yes, we're, we're doing little groupy boys on the thing so we don't have to bolt into the wall because we don't want to be the people who f the wall. We are not tradesmen. <laughs> you can say that again for the f people at the back. We are not tradesmen. <laughs> but in saying that, it is cool to get something with texture on your wall because it will deaden the sound. Whether that's curtains or a big carpet, they can actually be decorative and be part of the set. So that's something you can get a little bit custom with. So the next thing we had was lighting. Um, you might think I had some big, fancy, expensive lights. No, I just had these. 
This looks legit, but this is legit just like a piece of sheet plastic in front of like normal lights on this really <laughs> plastic like handle. I don't know how good a quality it's going to be in regards to lasting, but the light I'm getting from it's pretty damn decent. Um, and that, th this was like a pack of three and they were under a hundred bucks. The next thing I needed to do was the LED strips, which I sat there and uh, wrapped around the foam. Cause I thought just need a little bit of fucking uh, razzle dazzle. <laughs> so, you know, I'm pretty happy with how they're looking, even though the adhesive is not fucking sticking cause no adhesives ever fucking seem to stick when you're trying to make stuff. The next thing I needed to do was put this some bitch up. Oof, it's basically a big frame that came with those lights cause I had a green screen, but I've put a black sheet over it and a big dense thick black rug that is actually part of soundproofing, but it's also blocking the window light that's coming in. When I get enough money, I'll actually put some curtains in, but right now that's giving me like consistent light lighting because that doesn't mean I have like light flashing in and out from outside all the time. The next thing was like the bit of, that just took the longest, but like I just needed it done. We probably could have had videos out like weeks ago, but like I just, I just wanted this. So one of my homies, Chris, he's a carpenter. And I was like, I want a wooden logo to put up right in the middle of those foam slots. Like, I want this to look legit. I want this to look professional. So once Chris was on board, I kind of popped into one of his job sites and made him cut it out for me. But I'll tell you what's worth doing, getting some good friends who can help you out and make sure you return the favor. He's great with tools and DJing. I'm great with film. I make sure I hook him up with film as well. It's about helping each other out to get ahead. Anyway, the reason this was so important to me is it was just the cherry on top of the cake that we needed for this studio. It just made it ours. And to be honest, that's really important. And I just wanted a space where I could just get this content out. I was sick of it feeling like a chore. I wanted to be able to go in and click record and get started. I know it can sound a little bit silly on the surface talking about dating, lifestyles and relationships in our podcast, but it's such an important part of growth because it's, it's just an area that seems to be so neglected. I don't care if only 10 people like the video, as long as it kind of like helps one person, that's all that actually matters to me because this stuff really improved my life. Being able to generate attraction and build your relationships and go on fun adventures with people without any sleaziness attached to it, without feeling like a boy, without feeling like you're trying to cheat people, just offering good value and taking it back when it's appropriate. I think it's such an undervalued skill set, and there's so many people out there that can value from this. So if you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And I really look forward to hearing from you. If you have any questions or inquiries, we'll be happy to answer them on the show. Anyway, you cheeky little champions, I look forward to seeing you next time. Hope you enjoyed the video.